Hello everyone, welcome back to Bad Anime Sunday. Uh, I have to say, I really, 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 really miss last week when Paul wasn't here. I was being a little bitch, I was tired and hating life and whatever, therefore... Yeah, he he was being a little bitch. Yes, I was being a little bitch. But I am back! I'm alive! I even, let's Unfortunately. Say... Oh, well, okay. Nice of you to say, but... <laughs> I'm sorry, this anime has put me in a terrible mood. I just hate everyone. <laughs> okay. Today, we are reviewing Garzi's Wing! A I just anime... want to say, <laughs> before we begin, this is not the room of anime... <laughs> No, this not is not quite. the this is not the plan nine from this is not the plan nine from outer space of anime, but it's pretty goddamn close. It is pretty close, you know. Um, so obviously we did watch the dub as usual because you know this that I couldn't even imagine watching the sub of this. If I watched the sub of this, I'd be. You know, Sam Venn's opinion, I already heard from him, is that this is a really, really boring anime, in which I agree, it is super boring, but the dub makes it so funny, but the sub would just put this as a boring thing that I would forget instantly after watching it, but the dub is so funny that somehow I ended up loving this anime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, although I will say episode one was a lot funnier than episode two and three, but th they all had their moments for sure. I think it's because you don't quite expect the voice acting to be as bad as it is. So in episode one, it's a bit of a shock. But in episode two, you kind of get used to it. So it's not quite as funny, I don't think. Yeah, maybe. But there are still some amazing moments in episode two. There, there, there's some amazing moments in every single episode, and uh, you know, you could you could just parody almost every line from Garzy's Wing quite literally. Well, uh, before before we get to lines that are parodyable, I don't even think that's a word. Maybe we should uh, discuss the story. Oh God! Chuck, I'm not doing it. Uh, Paul, uh, well volunteered. You all have to. right, so. <laughs> We're introduced immediately. Pray for him, ladies and gents. This is going to be very difficult, okay? Um, so we're introduced immediately to a young man named Chris who's having a little fight with his uh, girlfriend. Uh, we have no idea what they fought about. I, I don't even remember. I don't think it matters. I may maybe they said it. I don't remember at all because I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. All I remember Pizza is Pizza toppings. Maybe it was about pizza toppings or whatever, but um, that's what I'd find about. And so uh, Chris drives off into the distance, and then these magical golden, this magical golden duck chicken thing flies into it. To I him. think it's meant to be a goose. Okay, whatever. So we'll just say magical gut duck chicken thing flies into his body and. Uh, Brings out his spiritual self, I believe, or just another part of him, and guides that part of him into another world. So basically, he is both in the real world and another world at the same time, and somehow they're still connected somehow. And um, so he gets, he is, of course, the legendary chosen war warrior called. The Garzi's wing, or well, he has the Garzi's wing. Uh, basically, they're just flying shoes, is what they are. They really don't seem that special or cool at all. I don't know what's so awesome about them. They don't seem practical at all. Actually, they seem like they would get him shot by arrows. But he's, uh, uh according to him, uh, I think what they are meant to do is, I think, as I say, um. I think what it is, is that they're meant to, like, give him the power of flight, um, I think. Well, yeah, they gave him the power of flight, but that just doesn't seem even very practical with the kind of weapons they use in this world, you know? No, they, it's pretty much medieval fantasy all the way through. So, uh, anyway, uh, so he has Garzi's wing, and it makes him fly around, and apparently that's really special, even though there's tons of flying things, so why a flying guy would be 
anything special. I have no idea. They don't seem to do anything other than that. They don't seem to give him magical armor or make him powerful, super strong or anything. They just seem to make him fly. Well, whatever. And apparently, uh, since he is a uh, kendo swordsman slash archer in real life, uh, he's really good at fighting despite being a massive whiner. You know, um, apparently he's somehow still... A bit of a badass, I guess. Uh, uh, he is kind of a badass for an ordinary, uh, uh, uh... Oh, as much as he can be. Well, you see, he's kind of a badass in an extremely unrealistic way. He ha- He's, you know, a normal high school student, but he doesn't seem to have any shock when he kills people. You know, he seems to take until it... Until right at the end. He seems to take it rather well, for the most part, until, yeah, right at the end, which was... Okay, never mind. When he suddenly you know, decides you know, I'm, he has I'm, a problem yeah, with No, it. I was just you know, kidding with you when I said this guy was a badass. I was just trying to trick the audience. To, <laughs> no, no. This guy is just the funniest main character ever, thanks to the dub. And the sub, I'm sure he's just the most boring piece of crap ever, but the dub makes him hilarious. Anyway... He's like a combination of anyway, the hero he's... of Baal <laughs> and Tommy Wiseau. Anyway, I totally... Uh, went off topic um anyway uh so he's there to help guide this uh enslaved army or well not just these enslaved people this enslaved tribe uh to get away from this these people who were ruling over them treating them like slaves uh, you know and uh that's basically the entire plot <laughs> um literally yeah. uh the only only thing else is that while he's in there he, he talks to his physical self that's in the other world and uh, you know tries to get hints and advice from him and uh when he gets hurt in that world his physical world also gets hurt it's very confusing it's not explained very well um and by the way this is a three episode ova it is a completely original animation you know there's no manga no light novel it's based off of and the story goes nowhere and the story does not even finish does not finish you know you never know what truly happens of all this this is directed by the gundam director of all people and it is probably the worst thing he's ever made Uh, this is like just i reckon he must have made this just kind of as a practical joke like Someone dared him to just to make a really, really bad anime because I can't imagine someone accidentally being this bad. This is almost designed to be bad. So, yeah, it's 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 especially in how the plot works. Yeah, and and of course, uh, it's an extremely fast. Well, I say fast paced. I guess you could say fast paced, but basically, things are just. It's one of the like. Many of the other animes we've watched on here, uh, it's one of those things where events are just constantly happening. You have no idea what the hell is going on. They constantly reference terms that you have no idea what they mean. And following, and that's where we get to the best parts of the dialogue. Yes, uh, the the names are just hilarious. Uh, but uh, uh, following the plot is impossible. It, it is yeah. literally impossible. It is impossible to keep track of things. It is, you know what? This is one of those anime, much like Art of Fighting, you just got to take your friends, grab a couple of beers. I don't drink per se, but if you do drink then or don't drink, just grab your friends. Say, this is bad movie night. We need to watch this. And I absolutely recommend you watch this because and watch the dub because more than likely you will laugh your ass off because I know we've said some dubs on here have been bad, but this one is the best bad dub out of all of those. This honestly, first of all, that the re- that everything you just heard, that's pretty much why I asked Paul to do the story because I gave up trying to analyze the story, and I'm the story guy on this podcast. So yeah, yeah if, that's why. So, so if so if I've given up, there's really no hope. Things. This is like diabolic lovers for men, basically. Like things happen. But the story doesn't really progress. What story there is progresses because it has to progress, not because the characters have made it progress in any meaningful way. It's just kind of... It's completely disjointed. Events don't flow naturally. And things happen is really the best way I can use to describe it. Like, 
For example, they talk a lot about making gunpowder, and eventually that leads to them making a gun, but that this whole thing about making a gun, it never comes up again. Instead, what we get is the hero's whole dilemma with whether or not he's going to kill the villain at the end, even though he's just killed, like, 16,000 other bad guys. And you're like, wait, what? Uh, I... I don't know what was hap- I mean, obviously, what happened is, I think every single episode might have been written by a different person, but with the same- sh- On a different planet. On a different planet, with the same shitty, you know, understanding of the world intact, and I honestly, you know, this is- You know how we uh, attempt to uh, give suggestions on anime to fix them? Yeah, I, 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 I have nothing to give to this one. I, 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 I don't have anything either. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how confused. you would fix this. This is one of those projects you would have to just scrap the whole thing and start yeah. from scratch because this is this is unfixable. In terms, there is of- no saving this. This was. This was another level of bad, and I think it. And I think, but I think, I think I know why, and that's the only thing I know about it. It's because it's not because the story is too um, complicated and too excessive, although that is definitely a problem. It's because the story is really, really cliched, but it's presented in a way that's stupid. It's the presentation that's the problem, because events do just jump all over the place, and we never really get time to be sat down and to have what's going on explained to us. It takes about a whole episode before we get the slightest bit of exposition or elaboration as to what's going on in this story. And even when we get it, it's peppered with all of these nonsense terms like bajuju and darogoro and farore. And I'm like, look, just just call them fairies. Call them dragons. That's what they are. It, you don't... It's it's really funny because nothing that complicated besides the two Chris's talking to each other is really happening per se, right. and yet they somehow make the story completely nonsensical. It's the presentation, as I say. It's because we keep flitting from one event to the other, because we keep flitting between Chris in the fantasy world and Chris in reality, who I just want to say... He and his friends take this whole mind-body split exceedingly well. Oh my god, that is... Oh, Jesus. It just happens. It's like, hey, Chris, what are you doing? Ah, oh, you're not, so mad. Not, not too bad. Going to a high school reunion, had the common cold the other day, uh, played a bit of Persona Q, and then my mind and body just got split between two worlds. One of them's going off to fight in a war. Wow, pretty cool. I just wanted to see my mum. And it's that it's that casual. It, it really, really is. is that casual. It's, it's like, so funny. Oh, um, and, and, and it's, oh my god! Uh, one of the best lines of dialogue was from his friend. It was like I, I don't remember the line exactly, but it was something like Chris's mind and body has has penetrated his spirit. And it's like you know a normal dude saying this. <laughs> it's so great. The thing I love. Um, was the, there's a line about halfway through the first ep- I think it's in the first episode, where Chris's body says to Chris's spirit, I must make sense of this convoluted nonsense. <laughs> and I'm just like, this is exceptional. I mean, this this story is so bad that the anime itself is, the characters itself are admitting they don't know how to fix it. <clears throat> wow. Yep, it's that it's, that that's something. It's pretty pretty bad, uh, and uh, yeah, un- unfixable. But uh, and of course we still have to have you know the story still tries to have uh, the most it has in terms of any sort of character development is it has a tsundere girl in it. Yeah. And the when I say character development, I, I mean, no, no, that, that, that's not really accurate, but I, I'm just if saying... If you squinted while you were high, it might possibly resemble an attempt at character development. But, but basically... That's as close as we can get, But there. one girl basically acts like she hates him and th- is un- thinks he's unreliable, and uh, 
Chris has basically done nothing in terms of conversing with her that would change her mind, but I guess his heroics uh, changed her mind, and she just acts all sundere and jealous because he's friendly with their priest girl person. I don't really understand her either, but... Um, and it's like, that's the that's max amount of character development you get. You know, Chris doesn't get any character development. Most certainly not. So. No, which is weird because you'd expect at least he would get some. But no, he gets nothing. He starts off as a bland, boring douchebag. And funnily enough, that's what he ends up as. God, it's just, I don't know what the director was thinking. I, I don't think he was. Maybe they spent. Oh, no, I mean, it's not like not. it's not like the animation is amazing or anything. It's not horrible. It, it, it's okay. It's it's, it's oh, that's the that's actually the biggest praise we could say that about this anime, other than the dub, is that the animation is more, okay. It's it's yeah. passing. It's passing grade. You know, way better than Art of Fighting. You know, and uh, well, you know, I think it's time we get to our favorite part of this anime. The dub. Right? Oh, dear. The, the, if there's one thing that saved this anime, and the re- the main reason you should watch it is the dub. We, and we've watched anime with, with bad dubs. Bao, the, Tekken, this... but this is God compared to those. <laughs> this is the holy grail of bad <laughs> anime dubs. Oh. I mean, wow. The scripting is legendary. <laughs> the dialogue, like... Who talks like this? Like, there's a moment where I think Chris is meeting his teacher and, uh, like, at the swimming at the beach or something, or a swimming pool, I can't remember which one. And she's just coming out of the water and she says, oh, hi, Chris, you know, you look like you're in, sh- you look like you're well in shape for someone who's studying for an exam. <laughs> and you're like, wait, how do those connect? And the next thing he says is, hi, Miss What's-A-Face, you look sexy. No, no, he said, you sure got sexy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh God! It's so funny. Why? Who wrote that line? And just the acting and delivery. It, it, even if the line is an act, so like funny, like that line, all the acting you could do, a f- you could parody this whole video. You could just take lines and show it, and you could make someone laugh. Because- you don't even need to parody it. Just show it completely. Out in out context in context, like like say if we were doing a nostalgia critic thing where he was cutting in random lines from his movies, you could do that with every little line, every scene from this movie, and it would be hilarious because that is how funny the acting is. Because all the acting, you know, is you know, it doesn't always match lip flaps even, so it's there's no excuse here. I don't. It's funny how consistent the acting is. So yes, it's almost they like they always the, have this kind of vocal tone, which it, never really rises above it, it, it's, it's, like loud everyone, noise. It's not just it's not every character has the same acting quality. So it's almost like the director told them to act like this. And if that's the case, that's so funny because literally every like Chris always talks. He's always projecting his voice at top rage <laughs> but some of the acting you could just tell that the actor didn't give a shit and it was just he just tried to make it sound as funny as possible like there's this one part where one of the generals is giving an orders is it's like and you hear off screen one of the soldiers go like yeah and then he's and then he finishes giving his order and he goes okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's 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 so good there's so many good instances. You absolutely have to watch this anime just for the dub. It's all on YouTube anyway, so there's no excuse. So go watch it for that dub, if anything. I, I highly... God dang, it's so funny. So funny. Although I have to say, as funny as it is, I did get bored of it. And uh, I got uh, sick yeah. of it really quickly. Yeah. It's... It's it's a one trick pony. You see, the thing I think that bored me is the fact that it really is all like this. It's just everyone speaks in the same completely bored but kind of loud and projected tone. Mm -hmm. So it kind of feels like a lot of bored people are shouting at you. And you'd think that wouldn't be possible, but they found a way. And I think the only actor 
whose voice and acting fit their character was the fairy girl because that seemed to be her character anyway. Oh, I wanted her to get torn apart. I mean, don't get me wrong. She's an annoying character by nature and an annoyingly written character, but I want to say that her actor probably acted her out appropriately. I can probably imagine that's exactly how Yeah, was... about as best as you probably could. For such a shitty written character, yes. Yeah. Well, Although I have to say, one thing I really, really raged at. There's a scene where um, these two guys grab her and they start trying to pull her apart by her legs, like, j- like you know, just like you're tearing an insect in two. And I was just like, oh my god, finally, something entertaining is going to happen. It doesn't happen. Yes. Uh, I was so let down. Unfortunately, that that is the nature of this, is uh, the, you, the dub, the dialogue it, itself, um is all you can rely on for entertainment. As far as actions that happen on screen, none of no. it is as funny as, you know, stuff that was in, like, you know, Tekken or whatever. There's no invisible dinosaurs or anything like that. The, the plot isn't f- quite funny enough, but the dub the dub is the only reason. You could literally mute the whole thing and just li- and turn away from the screen and listen to the yeah. dub and you would get probably you would get the same experience because there's no point in watching it for you know whatever, but yeah, I, I agree. It's it's there's nothing really that entertaining other than the dub itself. Yeah, so, pretty much. Uh, if, uh, this this is, I, I think it's one of the. Sh- it, this is the shallowest show we've seen because even something like Art of Fighting or even Diabolic Lovers, at least we can say things about them, like the themes, the story. But this is a really archetypal story, just being delivered by boring actors who can't. Well, I say actors in massive inverse inverted commas. With a story that should make sense, but just has to zip all over the place. And just some of the most inhuman, unbelievable dialogue. It is so, so bad. And I know you enjoyed it, but I'm personally going to put this down as the... Like, after Diabolic Lovers, this is probably the worst thing we've seen for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I totally see it, because you're right. If it wasn't for the dub... It would be a boring piece of shit. I somehow was able to have fun with the dub and laugh at everything, almost. I mean, I, like I said, I enjoyed episode one the most, and then maybe you're right, maybe got used to the dub um, by the end, uh, and it wasn't quite as funny, but uh, I think it was also only three episodes, so it wasn't quite as painful as the other shows that I've wa- we've watched. And, well, mm. and also, I was laughing at the dub so much that, yeah... But, uh, man, there isn't much to say about this anime. There really isn't. I mean, no. what what can we say other than you have to, you have to listen to, uh, you don't have to watch the whole thing, but I would at least, no, I don't. You, you can at least watch the first episode and laugh at the hilarious dialogue and dub. And uh, it, it, probably much more fun to watch drunk if that's your thing, too. <laughs> oh, I think I might have had more enjoyment with this if I had been drunk during it. Yes, yeah, so uh, definitely get whatever drugs you like and watch this <laughs> and uh, have a good time. Because you probably will have a good time. <laughs> you probably won't remember it if you play a drinking Actually, that raises a question. This might be the first anime we could actually play a drinking game for. Oh, yeah. Take a you... shot every time there's a bad delivery. Oh, no. We, we, have, to make it, <laughs> we have to make it a little more. <laughs> It'd be like... Oh. Take a drink every time Garzi's wing does something completely unexpected and nonsensical. Oh, wait, you'd still end up coming to with that one. Take a shot every time they mention the powers of the greater Earth and universe of the wind. <laughs> Or the Bajuju tree. Like, uh, uh, every- this is this is the thing I don't understand. What does the ba- they keep mentioning this the thing called a Bajuju tree? <laughs> it's a MacGuffin. It's a MacGuffin. It's like it's a plot device, basically. Uh, the Bajuju. Um, like I said, the the story doesn't actually finish. This was only the first three episodes. No, 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 no. But like, bear with me here. What? What is the point of this Bajuju tree? What does it do? What does this plot? Yeah. 
device uh, do? Uh, apparently it was supposed to give him like a super power up or something if he got to. But he already had that super power. So it, what, it gave him a super power that he already had? Maybe it would uh, give him wings on his back instead of on his feet. You have no idea, do you? No, I don't. I'm going to guess it does the same thing as the Symphonia tree and ties the two worlds together. I'm, um, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> because that's basically what it did, isn't it? <laughs> no, uh, well, I don't know because the ending was confusing. I mean, because he has it wasn't—it wasn't, it wasn't even the ending, is why. <laughs> no, the story just stops. It doesn't end. <laughs> it really does. It's like if, like, if you want a good um, comparison for what this anime is like. Imagine being driven, like, 50 miles in the car by a crazy person, constantly being told, we're going to, I don't know, McDonald's, we're going to McDonald's, we're going to McDonald's. And then just halfway on the road, he just leaves you and walks off with no explanation. That's what this is like. That's basically what it's like. Um, this is... I, I, I want... To, on my anime list, I believe this might be, other than possibly, like, a hentai, but I think this is even lower than hentai or whatever... This might be the lowest rated anime ever. And it probably wow. and it probably deserves it. <laughs> I will say that. You know it, Yeah. I, I would not give this a high score at all. Like no. I wouldn't even give this I I I'm sorry. I, I, I was broken. This is the anime that broke me. It's it's, it's pretty funny. So <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I, unfortunately I agree, because the reason, you might ask, why isn't this The Room, the anime? Because only the dialogue is excruciatingly bad, and only the dub is excruciatingly bad. For this to be The Room of the anime, the scenes, there would have to be more ridiculous scenes themselves. And the animation would actually have to be terrible as well. So, it's not quite there yet we haven't quite found, we're getting closer we haven't quite found that gym that is the room of anime but if you found this to be your room of anime congratu to congratulations you. you found the shit on the heap for your soul <laughs> for anime in the, the anime part of your soul and you will look at every other anime way more positive after it so it will only get better <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Until you find it, something worse. And if you find something worse, I am I am sorry. I really am. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh is is there anything else to say about this piece of shit? Um Actually I do have one more thing I want to address. I don't understand the religion of this story. Um they continually keep calling out to this guy called Take Mika. Bo oh means. god, I think that's I think that's a shrine thing. I think that's a joke. Right. I think but, that's a Shinto my, but my, thing. But my maybe okay, he, he, so he's a Shinto god. But here's the thing. Why would the Shinto gods, assuming that they exist in this universe, why would they care about some foreign world with a bajuju tree that doesn't even worship them? Uh Because they don't seem to exist in the other worlds. So Yeah, I I don't think I think it, And they ha seem to have their own tribal cultures which actually do work. I like um I don't understand what this bajuju tree is and I'm pr and I don't even uh, think the you, writers you, do. You, you know, you, but, you shouldn't even question it because I you But Yeah. Having said that, I do recognize actually that Whatever it is, even if I don't understand it, I can understand that it clearly works for the purpose of plot device. So my question is, like, is this a setting where all of... This is like a kitchen sink of gods, or is this like the Shinto deity is going by another name, or... what? What's kind of... What, what, what's the story? What's going on here with this uh, whole divine arrangement? Because it makes no sense to me. And I think it annoys me because actually it's one of the... F it's, no, it is the only thing I found kind of interesting. Like, how we go between these two worlds of different laws. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and different gods and different belief systems. And I thought, okay, there there is kind of something here that, you know, maybe could be used for... 
you know, some kind of world building, but no, it's not really used. It's not capitalized upon. And it's just kind of bad. And that's disappointing to me. I yeah. was hoping for something a bit more substantial in terms of... You were of hoping for world. too much. That's I was hoping for too much. I gave up after the first 10 minutes. Um, I don't blame you. Um, yeah, and so uh, this is this is amazing. Amazingly bad. And I hope we find something worse. I really do. And that way, Sam Ben could suffer even more. I hate you sometimes. Yes. This is why. I, this is why I wasn't looking forward to working with you again. Yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, that wraps up our episode. I don't think there's anything much to say about it other than go experience that dub for yourself and tell us what you think of it and what your favorite line is. Uh, yes, indeed. My favorite. Give us, your, give us your reactions in the comments, and uh, don't forget. Also, we do take requests for bad anime. I think uh, this coming one, uh, we've got a request from Jasmine to do Tales of Zestaria. Um, the I don't know. I don't even know what the subtitle is. Doshi was something or other. I'm sure so, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess we'll be taking a look at that one. All right. We'll see you guys later. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye.